But first, the deadline is looming. Minnesota lawmakers have just about a couple of weeks left to agree on a state budget, and that's just one of many issues. Good evening and thank you for choosing ABC 6 News. I'm Miguel Octavio. It's the final stretch for Minnesota lawmakers. They have two weeks left to come up with a deal on a more than $50 billion two-year state budget. The goal is to finalize a budget to avoid a government shutdown at the end of June. Here are other major issues this session. The bonding bill, the governor's emergency power, and a police reform bill. The Senate, House and Governor have until May 17 to reach an agreement or risk going to another special session. Now, with the session wrapping up soon, local advocates are demanding changes to the state budget. ABC 6 News reporter Devin Martin met with organizers of Faith in Minnesota today. He shares why they believe community engagement is important now more than ever. We are, have all been in the same storm, but we are not in the same boat. Members and volunteers of Faith in Minnesota met at Soldiers Field Park to talk about economic and racial justice. The organization advocates for issues like paid family medical leave, affordable child care, and addressing climate change, which they all want to see included in the Minnesota state budget. Many of these conversations are stopped or not even had in the Minnesota Senate. Um, so our main focus is really um, about raising revenue, whether we can um, have the funding that we need in the long term to fund all the things that we, that we need to invest in. So asking that in our state budget, the wealthiest are asked to pay their fair share. Local politicians who attended the event, like Representative Liz Bolden of Rochester, say including these issues in the budget is important for a number of reasons. You know, that budget is really a moral document. It's, it's where our, it shows where our values are, it shows what we prioritize, and, you know, what we invest in is what we care about. And so I want to see uh, a budget that centers people. Representative Bolden says she's advocating for families and small businesses to be at the center of the budget. But she says in order for that to happen, people need to express how they feel about the budget for real change to happen. There is power in the collective voice that, you know, your elected leaders, we are here uh, to be the voice of our constituents. And so make your voice heard. And the people at the event took that to heart. One volunteer I spoke with says she's advocating for affordable child care. So that's why I'm here to speak up, not only for families that are struggling, but also daycare centers that are struggling to stay open and to pay their workers a living wage. Advocating for change. So the timing is perfect right now to bring awareness. In Rochester, Devin Martin, ABC6 News. One of the biggest debates in this session is about whether to raise taxes. The Republican-controlled Senate passed their version of the tax bill last week. Senate Tax Committee Chair Carla Nelson says Republicans delivered on what they promised. They say with a $1.6 billion surplus, Republicans do not want new taxes. Among the major provisions in the bill are a partial tax exemption for pandemic unemployment benefits, plus full tax exemption for companies that got PPP loans from the federal government during the pandemic. By comparison, both the governor and the House tax bills propose over a billion dollars in tax increases to support their tax relief and overall budget plans. The DFL House tax bill passed last week with a new fifth income tax bracket for of 11.5 percent. That's for couples earning more than a million dollars and singles more than 500,000. They close a corporate tax loophole on foreign income, a tax exemption for unemployment benefits up to $10,200, and cap PPP tax exemptions at loans up to $350,000. Let's live in a state where we have enough money to pay for kids to not have to sit on the floor when they go to class. Democrats offered several amendments to the bill to raise taxes. They say they're needed for education, health care, and other services. Staying at the state capitol, the deadline is coming quick for lawmakers hoping to legalize recreational marijuana. This would apply to those 18 and older in Minnesota. Yesterday, another committee approved the measure. This is despite concerns from someone who works with families whose teens use marijuana. The stories are sad and almost always start out with, my teen was an A student and an athlete, started smoking marijuana, and is now flunking out of school and refuses to stop saying, it is harmless and just a plant. By passing this legislation, we're making guinea pigs of out, out of our teens, and is this something that Minnesota really wants to gamble with? Republicans in the Senate say they will not consider the proposal. The legislative deadline, again, is just over two weeks out.